to my peoples may have been the title of Emperor Franz Josef's manifesto about the Austrian entry into World War I, but it could have doubled as a Habsburg motto about intimate relations as well. Even though his reputation has come down through history as a stodgy, old-fashioned, strict traditionalist, truthfully, there was a lot of wiggle room for Franz Joseph. It was tradition, if you'll recall, for the Habsburg emperors to have interests on the side. (laughs) Which Franz Joseph certainly did prior to marriage, and later with some help from his wife Elizabeth, known as Cece. Who were they to argue with several hundred years of beautiful tradition, after all? But being emperor meant that Franz Joseph could leave many of the dirtier and more awkward jobs to those below him, such as breaking up long-term affairs. After one 13-year affair, which many believe resulted in a daughter, the director general of the Habsburg Fund did the deed for the emperor. He did give her quite a large settlement, however, and one should always be planning toward a financial future. This particular breakup was necessitated by the emperor's new fling, the one arranged by his wife. That fling with actress Katarina Schratt would last for the rest of his life. So maybe it was less of a fling and more of an enduring snatch. Nor was it Katarina's first rodeo. After affairs with the likes of the Bulgarian King Ferdinand, she was well aware of her job description and duties, and her performance reviews must have been absolutely stellar. If the 900 plus letters written to her by the emperor are any indication. The whole situation suited everyone marvelously, including the emperor's wife, Cece, the empress who smoked, sported a tattoo, and probably nursed an eating disorder. It wasn't that Cece was uninterested in sex. She had her own familial history of libidinous urges, along with mental instability, an unfortunate combination for women at that time. Rather, the stifling court etiquette and overbearing mother-in-law turned her off sex in Vienna. But the late birth of their last daughter, Marie Valerie, showed that Cece would still celebrate favorable politics in the traditional manner. The biggest scandal of the Habsburg reign, however, came to fruition in the son of Emperor Franz Joseph and Empress Sisi. The inbreeding issues of the Habsburg imperial family are well known, but Rudolf was the unfortunate recipient of mental issues from his mother's side as well. He may have started his sexual conquests early, at age 14 from his diary entries, but An overwhelming depression was not far behind. His mental state was not helped at all by marriage with Princess Stephanie of Belgium. Probably because her absolute and abiding fury over the gift of a venereal disease was unrelenting. And can't say I judge her for that. His shocking ending, a suicide murder in the Vienna woods with a 17-year-old mistress was difficult to grasp for nearly everyone. Even though an earlier mistress had reported the crown prince's intentions to the police already. Sex and murder. At least the poor girl wasn't tortured to death as befell a mistress of a previous Habsburg son. Small favors. But much like the end of Franz Joseph's affairs, Someone else had to handle the awkwardness. The 17-year-old body of Maria Vetsera was buried quickly and as privately as possible in the closest cemetery to the hunting lodge where she died. Her uncles were quickly enlisted to handle this issue. 
propping the girl's corpse up with a broomstick in the carriage so that she looked alive from a distance. And then they put out that she had left for Venice. The story eventually fell apart. And although the emperor was to gain a dispensation for Rudolph's state of mind, which allowed him to be buried with his family, Maria Vetsara was left to her open grave that was disturbed numerous times over the next century and a half. Duty, you see, is a somewhat nebulous concept open to interpretation, but often doesn't include awkward debts run up on the individuals on the side. But as always, the full story is far more, more. Luckily, we had Maria to play history detective and track down all of the sex, drugs, and rock and roll in Habsburg, Vienna. Next week, we're on to pages 117 to 140, drugs. And more info for those reading along with us. If the stories of sex and Habsburg times have piqued your interest, Maria not only wrote the book, but she leads the tours, and you can join her in investigating all the lurid and wonderful sites she describes in Viennese history. It all had far more influence on current events than you might think. Oh, I love it!